Okay, we're working through exercise 21-1 of Murex Visual Basic 2015, which is working with a text file. And so I have the start files for 21-1 open. And if we look at customer db.vb, this would normally give us a method to get customers and save customers, but you can see that this is not doing anything. So let's make this functional. So the first thing I'm going to do up here is add um, some variables for the directory and sort of use dir as directory. And if you look at page 705, it says use like C colon slash VB 2015 files. We're going to use dot dot slash dot dot slash. And I'll show you why in a second. And then I'm going to call another property here, another variable here for file name and going to call this uh, customers.txt. We're going to be saving these customers as a text file. And finally, I will add a another one that another uh, variable, well, constant that says the path is the directory um, and the file name. So we're gonna take these two and put them together. I prefer doing it this way. The, the book says to like only have directory and path, but I want file name as well. Um, I think it makes it a little easier. Now let's look at dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. All right, um, this is the 21.1 customer text directory. This is what you started with. This is the solution that was opened. And this is the folder where I want customers.txt to reside. Um, right now, we don't have any text files here, so there is no database. We're going to create one in a second. But why dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash? So we are, when we build our project and we build it as a debug project, um, when it gets compiled, it gets put into bin, then debug. And so this is where our application sits. Dot, dot, slash means go up one directory. So let's go up a level and go up another level. And now we're back to where our solution sits and where all our files are. So this is where uh, customers.txt would reside. All right. So we have this list of customers and add code that reads a list of customer objects from a text file. So I'm going to need a, a file stream and I want to kind of break this down into steps. Okay. So the very first thing we need to do before we start working with file streams is we need to add an import statement. We need to import system.io and this gives us access to things like file streams and stream readers. And then I'm going to say um, dim, I'm going to call this like customers FS, customers file stream as new file stream. Now file stream has a whole bunch of different constructors. We are looking for, let's see if I can find it, path, mode, and access. Okay, so our path is literally path, right? That's this path right here. The mode comes from the file mode enumeration, and we are going to run it as open or create, which will try to open customers.txt. And right now it does not exist, so it'll be created. And then from the file access enumeration, we need to call read because that's how we want to, we're reading this file. So this gives us the file stream, but then we need to actually create the stream reader to read this file stream. So I'm going to say dim text in as new stream reader. And this takes our customer file stream. So we already have our list of customers was created. So do while text in dot peak is not equal to negative one. While I can get more data, 
I want to read a line of the, the text file and store it back into a string. So I'm going to call read line on my text in stream reader. I'm going to save that back to um, a row. So right now, if I just like, I could, you know, simply log this or whatever, but you'll see that it'll be the first line of the text file. Our text file doesn't exist. So let's pretend like, because it doesn't exist, text in dot P would equal to negative one. So it doesn't even have to do anything. Text in dot close. When we're done reading, we're going to close it. And then we are going to, oh, already has that return customers. So right now, get customers will work because it doesn't really return anything because our text file doesn't exist. I'm going to leave that right now. I'm going to come down here to save customers. And for saving customers, you know, we start out very similar to getting customers. So I'm going to take these two lines. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste them down here. And instead of calling this thing a stream reader as text in, I'm going to call name this text out. And this is not a reader. This is a writer. And because it's a, it's a writer, when I open the file stream, my mode is going to be create. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm clobbering over whatever file is already there. So that's what the create file mode enumeration gives us. And then we are going to write to this file. And simply, I'm going to say um, for each customer as customer in customers, what are we going to do? Remember, customers get sent in. So we have this customer object that comes over. I am going to uh, text out dot write and let's look at a customer i don't know what a customer has a first name last name email address okay so i'm going to write customer dot first name and then this is going to be a pipe delimited file so the fields are separated by this pipe character uh, which is holding down shift it should be right above your enter key so I'm going to write the first name, I'm going to write the last name, and then I'm going to write email. Now email is the last field, so we don't add another pipe at the end of that. But what we do need is a new line. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can add VB new line like this, or we can use uh, write line, the write line method, which writes this and then puts a new line at the end. And when we're done, we just need to close our uh, stream writer. So again, I should be able to run this. The file did not exist. So when I went to read the customers, remember that the file stream was opened as open or create. So if I come back here, here we have customers.txt, you can see it was just created, right? 5-3-2020 at 2-39. This file was just created a minute ago. So that's what happened. Um, it read the file, but the file's empty. If we look, it's zero bytes. So really, we just return customers. Let's go back to my application. I'm going to click Add. I'm going to put in my name, email address, hit Save. Now when I hit Save, it should have written back to using the save customers, it should have written back. Now, why do we have this here? Because when it refreshes, it doesn't always read from the database. But if I hit exit and I go run this again, my list is empty because our my reading doesn't do anything yet. That's okay. Let's quickly though, let's look at customers.txt. And you can see it saved my first name, a pipe, last name, pipe, email address, new line. Great, so that's working as it should. Make sure that yours looks like that. Uh, I'm gonna close this file. All right, so we just gotta finish up reading this in. So we read in a row of data, but then we're gonna take that row of data and we're gonna break it out into columns. All right, so we're gonna create an array of strings called columns, 
and we're going to build this by splitting the row on the pipe character. So let's look at this real quick. Split takes a character and it will return an array broken up by that character. But if I just in here wrote this, that's a string. Okay, this is a string and we need that to be a character. So I'm going to run it through uh, CHAR to convert it to a character. So now we have columns. Columns zero contains first name and columns one contains last name and two contains email address. And we're gonna take this and we're going to create a product. So I'm sorry, a customer. And for creating a new customer, I actually have two instructors. If you're following along with the book on page 705, they create a new product and one by one, they add these um, properties. But I'm gonna use the one that takes the first name, last name, email as arguments to this. So again, this is the first name and well, I'm gonna kind of do it both ways. I'm gonna say dim first name as string is column zero. And I'm gonna say, this is just a little bit easier to, to understand what's going on. So I take column zero and I'm gonna assign it back to first name and then we do the same thing. One goes to last name, two goes to email, and then I create a new customer. And when I create the customer, I'm sending over first name, last name, email. And then finally, I need to customers.add customer. Now you could easily take like all this and probably combine it down to one line of code. I broke it out just to make it a little easier to understand. All right, so here we go. So now I'm going to run the application again. And now this gets populated based on the text file. Here's that text file. All right, and we can also test it like this, right? I can go, I can exit my application. I'm going to open my text file in an editor and I can put John Doe, J Doe at gmail.com. Okay, save that. So now when I run my application, where's my application? Right here. There it is. There's John Doe, Joe Doe. I guess I wrote Joe Doe. John Doe. And then I could take John Doe, delete it, hit exit. If I look at my text file again, there's just me in here. So that's what your, that's everything for 21-1. Um, make sure this is working because we're gonna be using this as the start of 21-2. But right now you can take this, uh, zip it up and submit it.